Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I had some questions on how exactly I fill any items that I've laser engraved with my Ortour Laser Master 2 Pro LU24. And uh, so I'm gonna show you that today. This is an older board that I did quite some time ago. Um, I did it at settings of probably at 2600 at 85%. And I believe it was done on a horizontal burn. Um, I switched everything I do now to a diagonal burn. I think you get a smoother, nicer finish of it. So if I get a close up here, you'll see a number of lines. It doesn't look as even on this type of board. I no longer use these type of bamboo boards that I was picking up at the dollar store um, because it was left in a room. And when it was there's little to zero humidity, these boards crack, even though they've been oiled and beeswaxed. Yeah, the quality, terrible. And I don't want to sell them to a customer and have them come back and say my board cracked. Um, so I have switched to this type of bamboo board. So that's just a, hopefully a helpful tip to you guys. <laughs> don't use these guys. Because obviously I think because of the grade and them being glued, and then of course you laser engraving and weakening that area, they're going to split on you. But they still make wonderful decor. So you can still buy these boards pretty cheap, do this, paint them, and then they can get put in the kitchen as decor. So, um, going on. Okay, so I'm just gonna go quickly over the type of brushes that I use. And I get Artist Loft brushes just from the dollar store. I'm using water-based paints. So these brushes last. I'm not paying a lot for them, but I'd be paying a lot more for the same exact name at some of the bigger craft stores. I'm not gonna mention any names, but I save a lot of money by going to just the dollar store and getting the Artist Loft brushes. Now, I prefer the firmer brushes because you're gonna be pushing some paint around and these work great for acrylic paint. These soft, natural hair brushes, they're more meant for watercolor and they will not move your acrylic paint around for you as well, unless your paint is really, really thin. Or if you're doing a stain, you can use these as well. So those are the type of brushes I use. I don't use the big, thick industrial brushes because you're gonna waste a lot of paint that way. You leave a lot of paint in the brush. So those are my main little tools. So the paints I'm gonna be using today, I just got from the dollar store as well. So they're your Deco Art Crafters acrylic paint. Um, now some I got from the big box stores as well. But this is exactly the order that I'm going to be doing on this cutting board. I'm going to start with a burnt umber. And I'm going to then go to a sea breeze color. This seems to be this year's go-to color. I'm going to add some Copenhagen blue. And then finally some white. Because I had a few questions on how do you make your white lettering pop so well. So the trick to doing these boards is because I am going to finish with the white that I want the white lettering to pop, I will start with the darkest color as my first coat. Then I will use my secondary color that I really want to pop out as my second coat. This one as kind of an accent will be my third coat because it'll pretty much be gone by the time I sand, but they'll be into some grooves of the board and uh, it'll leave some color and contrast. And then the white, of course, because I want my inside of my lettering white, will be the very last coat that I will do. So I'm just going to pause here and I'm going to get everything ready and I will start showing you how I paint my boards. Okay, so let's get started here. So I've got some burnt umber on the plate. I've dipped my brush. I'm watering it down a bit because I really want this coat to penetrate the board. And you can use this method in order to stain some of your signs, especially if you want to do uh, a variety of colors. Stains can be expensive. And uh, wow, this is a, a very inexpensive way to get that look. You use very little. So I'm dipping my brush and I'm stretching that a little bit more because I really want this first coat to penetrate the board. 
and it's gonna give that vintage look. So that'll be my very first coat. I'm gonna allow that to dry for about 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna go over it with a little bit thicker coat. And I'm gonna show you how I get into the letters and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna pause it here, and uh, we'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've let my board dry for 30 minutes now, and I just wanted to show you before I start my second coat, I've started a little bit there, um, of the stained appearance on it. And I used very little acrylic paint to achieve that. Um, now normally when I'm painting, you know, today I've got a plate, but I'll actually use an old, say, margarine container that I can put the lid on top of in between my coats so I'm not wasting the paint. Um, because as it dries, you'll get little chunks and stuff like that. And you definitely now do not want to get that into the grooves of your lettering. So as I'm painting in here, now that's pretty thin. But I don't want to fill up too much of the grooves. Now with all the coats that I'm going to be using, eventually the lines are going to start disappearing. Because you're filling that with acrylic paint. And you're going to get a smoother look on the lettering. Um, but you don't want to go too thick, of course, because when you sand, you're going to use all, lose all your color. So the idea is fill it in, go over it, but work it around so you don't have any big blobs or big fill-ins. So I'm going to finish this coat and then I'm going to do all those coats. I'll come back to the white to show you how I just fill in the lettering a little bit with the white. And uh, yeah, so we'll be back. While I was in the middle of the second coat, <clears throat> I realized I probably didn't burn down low enough or deep enough. So what I'm using right now is a cosmetic sponge. And these are great. I mean, you get a whole big bag of them for a dollar at the dollar store. And they're reusable, so eventually, you know, after it dries, I just cut that tip off and I reuse it. And especially if I'm going around finer areas, I can cut it down to a smaller size that I may need. So what I found is I haven't really burnt down deep enough because this is an older board and I was using my older settings when I began. So what happens when you sponge paint or use the regular brush to paint I'm filling in too much of the lettering and I don't want to do that. So that's why I'm just sponging around it right now. So I thought this was a good opportunity to actually show you guys that if I wanted to leave that lettering as is and I just wanted to paint the surface of it, this is what I do. Take my sponge, dab it into the paint, dab any excess off, start away from whatever I'm dabbing and with light pressure, dab. So you're not pushing any paint down into your lettering. So that's how you can paint the surface without painting your lettering. So I thought I'd get that opportunity to quick show you guys that. So I'm going to cover that with this now because I do not want to fill this in too much because when I go to sand, um, it's going to take away the color. So the white would be too high. My final coat of white. And when I sand, I'd lose that white. So that's why I switched over to this method. Now I'm working on my second coat here. I've already done my first coat of white. <clears throat> and as you can see, I've covered some of the board as well because when I sand, I don't want to lose too much of the color that I have underneath. And uh, this is how I do it. So I've got my synthetic brush. I'm just gonna go back and forth. Like I said, you don't have to be neat, but get it in there. Don't leave any blobs. That's why I'm going over. I'm not. Make, I'm making sure I'm not leaving too many raised areas as well, because then the sander will take too much color away from it. And I don't want the white raised too much in the grooves, because then the sander will take that as well. So that's that part of it. I'm going to cover this again with its second coat, and when we come back. I'll be ready to sand this, and we'll be at our finishing step. See you in a second. Okay, hopefully you can hear me okay, because I've got my fans going up here in the attic. It's a really hot day today, and I have my palm sander already. I've got a 120 grit sandpaper, 
Um, another important thing to remember is if you're using one certain sandpaper uh, disc for your painted objects, only use it for your painted objects because you will get paint powder or residue on any of your bare wood surfaces if you use that sandy disc again. So I always keep this one separate. And uh, here we go. Hopefully there's not too much vibration and I plan on fast forwarding it so you don't have to put up with the sanding sound. Okay, so that's all sanded now. You can definitely see. I just popped everything out. I'll use a paintbrush then. And I will go through and dust out everything. Because right now you'll see that I have blues and whites in my paint. And that is just literally the sanding dust. So I will clean all that out. Now I didn't wait a full 24 hours for it to dry for the sake of the video. This is just a scrap board that I'm using. Um, also, I had a lot more paint chips because I didn't sand it before I started painting it. It had been oiled in beeswax, so that's why the paint was flaking off. Normally, it doesn't. But, uh, yeah. And uh, I do recommend spraying a clear over top of this before you use any other clear coat just to seal it because you've basically taken the sheen off the acrylic. Yes, and I did include a video um, on my channel for the clear coats that I use. So I hope this video helps and inspires. Have a good day, everybody.